All right, here we go. We're going to take a look at both videos this morning and check this out. We've seen this guy before. I trust you have a copy of the Word of God tonight. We're moving into Revelation chapter 20. We've been in Revelation chapter 20. Here are these first six verses for a few weeks now, a couple of weeks. This will be our third look at this, and there's going to be one more uh, look at this. The Bible has a lot to say about the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. It's not studied a lot. It's not talked about a lot. It's not preached about a lot. Uh, and so we're just going to take, and we'll have tonight. Yeah, yeah except that that's all anybody teaches right it's, he says it's not talked about it's not studied about it's not preached about except that's all anybody preaches all right that's all that anybody teaches and, and this is here evidence of it that I've been <laughs> trying to show on a daily basis okay so you do a, a search for millennial reign you sort by upload date <clears throat> and you see everybody teaching it this is me by the way I'm the only one recently that is preaching and teaching against this idea of a millennial reign you see everybody I mean just video after video after video of people teaching this idea of a millennial reign it's absolutely incredible and this guy has the nerve to say nobody's teaching it everybody's teaching it it's insane now let's go back up here and check out this fella I haven't reviewed this guy before but you're gonna find this interesting <laughs> One nation, one power, Church of Christ, coming to you with another lesson. All right, one nation, one power, Church of Christ. Now let's take a gander's at, before we get started on this, I'll, I want to show you something here. And we'll go to his about page here. And we'll see he's got a website. What's this say? One Nation, One Power baptism listing. Please click the link for people in or near your area baptizing under the Mel <coughs> Melchizedek. Mel Mel I can't say that word. All right. <laughs> I, I can't say a lot of words. I can spell. Well, I can't even spell because I can't remember, but... Let's see if we can find that word. Right there. There's a good spot. Hebrews 5, verse 6. As he saith also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Am I saying that right? All right. called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. <clears throat> All right, uh, speaking of Jesus Christ, our Lord, right? All right, so, and then of course, we that are in Christ are a royal priesthood. Okay, now, um, I want to go to his website real quick. Let's do it this way. And we'll see, uh, you know, just average, normal. Uh, not surprising here. Contact the elder. Isn't that interesting? Con con last time an elder came to my house. He was a 15-year-old snot-nosed kid. Anyways. Um, nothing to... Just, uh, I don't know what these guys are. I really don't. 
<clears throat> no idea what these guys are. All right. Leadership isn't about advancing yourself. Leadership is about advancing your people. I don't know what that means, but okay. All right, sounds pretty good. They're from Arizona. All right, okay, so let's listen to what he has to say here. And then, of course, real quickly, I uh, see these, the videos, some of the videos, he you know, got baptizing people and uh, preaching, I don't know, Jediya? I mean, that, that's kind of, kind of a clue, isn't it? All right, let's, let's go. So, family, we started off when we talked about the thousand year millennial reign and then we were going to come back with part two but before we came back with part two we needed to talk about twinkling of an eye so that people would understand exactly what twinkling of an eye meant because now we understand now that Christ is going to return and when Christ returns we are still going to be in these mortal bodies because we're going to <clears throat> all right so it's unbelievable it's unbelievable. He's he's struggling, struggling big time. It, let's just go twinkling of an eye. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. All right. So, First Corinthians fifteen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, excuse me. So, in this moment, at the last trump, we are changed. We go from corruptible to incorruption. We go from being mortal to being immortal. This is as crystal clear as it could possibly be it doesn't get any more clear than that the issue here is when does this happen well it says when it happens right at the last trump at the last trump is the end of the world all right Jesus is asked specifically what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and Jesus describes the end of the world as the Sun will be darkened the moon will not give her light the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. This great sound of the trumpet signifies the end of the world it's like you watching a basketball game the clock hits double zeros the horn sounds it's over same thing the great sound of the trumpet is the end of the world and when they gather together his elect that's when we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump game over games over and that's when we're changed we that are saved are changed from corruptible to incorruptible mortal to immortal at the last trump when the buzzard sounds that's it it's over could not be clear it really couldn't We could also verify this in First Thessalonians 4, 
verses 16 through 18. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Brr, game over. Double zeros. It's over. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord uh, the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God right and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet in a moment in the twinkling of eye at the last trump this is the end of the world all right when this very clearly now elder what where is he at here elder maurice says no jesus lied now we gotta trust in what maurice says right did you catch that people would understand exactly what twinkling of an eye meant because now we understand now that Christ is going to return. And when Christ returns, we are still going to be in these mortal bodies. I mean, as clear as all can be. It, it, it exactly says, This mortal shall put have put on immortality. So therefore, we are no longer in this mortal body. It's unbelievable isn't it now I want to fast forward a little bit let's just go in our eternal bodies we also know to our let's, immortality so we talking about so we know what actually applies to us while we're in mortality and then we understand what will take place when we go to our eternal bodies in our eternal bodies, we also know, can be either, well, they'll be in the flesh, but you'll either have an eternal body in a celestial and terrestrial kingdom, or you can have an eternal body in a celestial kingdom. <laughs> oh, isn't that sneaky? Uh, have you heard those words before? If you haven't, you've... Uh never had a 15 year old snot nosed kid come up to your door and call himself elder huh but wait a second don't they call themselves uh, you know seventh day or latter day saints or something like that don't they call themselves latter day saints huh no, they don't if they're trying to fool you, do they? They won't if they're trying to fool you. Have you researched your food? Okay, so we got to handle that one real quick. All right. Just hang with me. I got something I want to show you, but um, let's do it this way. Uh-oh. I forget where we're at here. Right there it is. Okay. First Timothy four, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Now that's all I'm gonna say on that subject. Right there. There's more that we can get into, but this you know, watching what you eat stuff. If it tastes good, it's good for you and did you know your cheese could contain pork? Well what is that? You mean like pork milk? Pig milk? Come on, man. You guys are getting silly with this stuff. Well, you're, worried you're drinking pig milk. Come on. All right. 103 facts about the black Indians. All right. Oh, there it is. The Book of Mormon. The sealed Book of Mormon, huh? Right there they are. Right there they are. They're hiding it. Way down at the bottom. Is that crazy? Huh? 
Look at that. They hide it clear down there at the bottom. These guys are Mormons. Now, well, you could say, no, they're not Mormons. They're just, they believe every book that is given to them. Really. Uh, where are we at here? What's this going on? Okay, so the, uh, I was going to show more stuff, but <clears throat> yeah, yeah. No. No, I think that's enough, isn't it? Yeah. That's that's enough right there. There was something else that I saw and I don't know where it's at, but it doesn't matter. Uh they Did I did I see it somewhere in their about section right here? Uh, it doesn't matter. Somewhere I saw um, this idea that you got to read all the books of God. All right, it's interesting, right? So, if right there, there's one mention of it. That's not what I'm talking about. Somewhere it said you got to read the book of Enoch. You got to read the book of Jasher. You got to read the book of Jubilees. You got to read the Apocrypha. You got to read the book of Mormon, and since you don't have all those books you just gotta trust what they say they'll tell you what God says huh <laughs> I mean come on man uh, these guys ain't fooling me right they ain't fooling me I just wanna check something out right here okay yep yeah, so these books of the Apocrypha are not in the Bible. They're not in the 1611. They are church books. And I wouldn't call them extra biblical at all. All right, so anyways, who cares? So I just wanted to show that for you to summarize well, the point of this. These guys here, that's all they talk about is the millennial reign. That's all they teach is this idea of a millennial reign. And then, of course... Um, I would think people would get utterly confused when they hear all of these people talking about the millennial reign of Christ and then they go to Revelation 20 and you know what it makes no mention at all of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years it makes no mention of anybody reigning a thousand years in fact all it's saying is that we live and reign with Christ during this thousand years that's all that it's saying and blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power and when we are born of God the second death has no power over us right now right now are we priests of God and of Christ and right now Jesus Christ reigns in our life and we reign with him how can you rightly say that you are saved if Jesus Christ does not reign in your life right now huh and then this idea that Jesus reigns a thousand years completely contrary to what the Bible says and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end he doesn't reign a thousand years doesn't say he reigns a thousand years doesn't say anybody reigns a thousand years all it's talking about is this unique time period that we're living in right now from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his promised return it's a very unique time period right and Let's go back to the royal priesthood because there's a, a great connection here. All you have to do is connect the dots, right? You notice here in verse 6 it says, And they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And then we read here in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that we are a royal priesthood. We are priests of God and of Christ, a holy nation, a peculiar nation people which in time past were not a people but now the people of God 
which had not obtained mercy, but now obtained mercy. We are the people of God. Now, so this is this was not in times past, before the thousand years. We were not the people of God. It was, it was selected for one group of people, one country, and then Jesus came and changed all that and made the kingdom of God available for whosoever believes, anybody, both Jew and Gentile, right? If So long as they believe, everlasting life and the Spirit of God is available for everybody. The kingdom of God is available for all. It's now we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are the people of God. That's not how it was before baby Jesus came along. All right, and then, of course, Jesus promises to return. And when he returns, he will gather us together unto himself, and we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Right? This moment, when we see him coming in the clouds of heaven, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh this is when you're going to be changed from mortal to immortal it's the end of the world and when Jesus returns he's gonna make all things new there's no 1000 year period there's no zombie period there's no celestial terrestrial telestial nonsense it's the end of the world and everything's going to be new everything is going to be new everything <laughs>